campus to have public debate about this boycott and to find out what graduate students can do because I think it's terribly important that our voice be heard Sorry. on this campus. <laughs> Sorry about that. My, fault. My name is Renee Heberly. I'm the post spokesperson for the Graduate Employee Organization District 65 of the UAW. I'm also a graduate assistant in the Department of Political Science. I would like to give the floor to Mark Kennan, who has been working with the Graduate Student Senate and doing a great deal of research on the budget cuts. He's going to give you some information, and we're going to, let me outline the process of the meeting before I give him the podium. We're going to let you ask him some questions and answer them, hopefully keeping them to a minimum. There are fact sheets going around. There's an enormous amount of information going around. So we don't want to spend a whole lot of time going over and over information. But we do want to make clear what's going on to you all. The next thing that we're going to have is a statement from Sarah Lennox, who's going to be representing the Massachusetts Society of Professionals. Sorry. <laughs> Massachusetts Society of Professors. She will be reading a statement from the executive board committee. The following will be, we have here in our midst Provost O'Brien, and he has a statement that I will first read from the administration, and then the provost has agreed to take your questions, again for a limited period, for about five, ten minutes. Following that will be, if everyone could take a look at, what color is that piece of paper? The yellow piece of paper with our proposal and the demands on it and our proposal for action. We will ask people to consider those demands and we will be opening the floor for debate about the following action and that is the geo call and endorse a work stoppage on Thursday and Friday on this campus for the following purposes and organizing purposes that are outlined at the bottom of that sheet. So please make sure that you've read that, that you have your thoughts together, because we'd like to keep the debate short, concise, to the point, public, exciting, and have our vote and get organized. Okay? I would like to now give the floor to Mark Kennan, who will tell you something about what's going on and how this is affecting us. As Renee said, I've been hired by the Grad Senate to do research this semester as a research assistant in the Grad Senate on the budget cuts. And find myself going around campus and delivering all this horrible news to everybody. It's like not making me very popular around here. Um, and also, excuse me, I had the flu and just sort of crawled out of bed to come here so I can pass my phone today. Um, how many of you people were here last night at the Grad Senate meeting? That's about, I would say, 40%. So a lot of this information will be um, familiar to you that we gave it last night, but I think we need to give it again for people. And I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Putting um, three months of research into five minutes is, is kind of hard. It's, um, I guess that's why I want to be a professor, so I can go for 15 minutes without kind of any interruption at all. Um, the basic story, I mean, the underlying story here is that graduate students, especially TAs and RAs, are getting the worst end of this budget cut to probably anybody on campus. The worst case scenario at this point, and it changes daily, is that next semester graduate students will be facing a fee increase of between $450 and $550. As well, in addition, it looks like a possibility of layoffs of state-funded TAs and RAs of anywhere between 140 and 280 people. There are a number of reasons why it's going on, and people have to realize that this is on top of 600 TAs that have been cut between last year and this year. So that was a 30% cut last year to this year. Now they're talking about another 10 to 20% from that number. Real quickly, there are, there are five different things going on in the State House right now that affect UMass. And I'll do it real quickly. If you want more information, ask a question afterwards. The big major amendment, the big major bill that's cutting UMass, the $25 million cut against higher education as a whole, 6.4 million of that is from UMass. Now the trustees two weeks ago gave the university authorization to raise fees up to $350 to cover that 6.4 million. And that will be for next semester. The second part, then the, that's the major bill, and there's four smaller things going on. One is what they call the fringe benefit issue which is basically that our, our fees help 
pay for some of the fringe benefits that employees get from trust funds set up by those fees. In other words, your fees help pay for some employee fringe benefits on this campus. In the past, the state house has paid for those fringe benefits. Now the state house is deciding that they don't want to do that anymore and that we have to pay for them. The reason UMass, they've been paying them for UMass is because of some of the fees that we've been paying are paying for building bonds on this campus when we're not really supposed to be doing that. So in exchange for us paying the bonds, they pay the fringe benefits. Now what they're basically doing is saying we pay the bonds and the fringe benefits. That could result, if that goes through, in a $70 increase for graduate students. So it's $350 plus the 70 is $420. Then you add on a $50 increase that's already in place from the last cut last summer, that makes $470. The administration doesn't talk about the $50 that already was put in from last year, because that's old news already, but that takes effect second semester, $50 more than it's already on your bill. In addition, the State House is considering uh, a bill to raise out-of-state tuition so that your tuition and your fees will cover 100% of your education. At this point, they're estimating that to be about $1,900 a year, which would mean a $950 increase for tuition next semester for those of you who don't have tuition waivers. Now, most TAs and RAs do, but those friends of yours who aren't employees, who are just graduate students, will get hit by that if they're out of state. And the last one doesn't directly affect graduate students, but still just as insidious, in that the State House is trying to cut the benefit that union workers have in this campus, professional and staff, and classified staff, that, they're, that they themselves and their, fa and their families get tuition waivers to go to school here. So one of the fringe benefits of working here is that so you and your family can go to school for free. The state health is trying to take that away. Basically, we are the most vulnerable group on this campus. Everybody else who works in this campus, all employees are unionized, and any layoffs that they do on this campus, they've got to be negotiated with those unions. We don't have that protection at this point. If the university decides to cut 10 to 20 percent of us next semester, at this point they will just do it without any consultation. They might cut us 10 to 20 percent, they may employ all of us and cut all our salaries by 10 to 20 percent. So take a 20 percent cut in pay plus the $500 fee increase and that's what you're facing next semester. It's obvious that we need some kind of collective action People have been asking me today, um, people know I've been doing this research, okay, so what do we do? No matter what we vote on this proposal today, I'm not saying for against at this point, there's two things we need to do. One is graduate students, we need to flex our collective muscle. We need to show that we are united and they can work together, however we choose to do it. And the second part that has to come out very soon is no matter what we do today, we have got to reach majority as soon as possible. Without that majority, we can't bargain. The State House and the University Administration must know that when you're trying to cut graduate students like you are, you've hit a rock, and that's as far as they're going and no further. So anybody have any questions right now, I can answer them. There's got to be at least one. I'm not that good. Okay, thanks. State employees, so they are not permitted to urge our members to engage in work stoppages. Uh, of course, individual members may choose to uh, engage in acts of conscience if they want, and many of our members have, as you know. Many of our members support the student strike and are wearing white armbands and are very encouraged by the outpouring of energy and support and enthusiasm for fighting for the rights of public education in the Commonwealth. The uh, executive committee of the Massachusetts Society of Professors has written a statement expressing our support for students' efforts to try to increase funding for public education. That when we wrote that, that was originally directed at the undergraduates. Um, we decided this morning that this also was an appropriate statement for um, our support of graduate students' efforts to uh, work to encourage the legislature to fund our university. This was originally written by the executive committee. It was endorsed this morning by the executive board, which is the governing board of the union. I'd like to read that to you. It says, Dear colleagues, the executive committee of the Massachusetts Society of Professors shares our students' outrage at the repeated cuts in the university budget 
and impose any further fee hikes, staff reductions, or budget cuts. The MSP recognizes that the proposed student strike is undertaken because of students' concern for the future of the university. In ordinary times, we cannot condone missing classes or assignments, but these are not ordinary times. The future of public higher education in Massachusetts is at stake. We admire students' willingness to make sacrifices for a cause which benefits not only them, not only the faculty and staff, but all residents of the Commonwealth. We therefore request that faculty not penalize students who are participating in the strike. Absences should be excused, assignments and tests postponed. We also urge faculty to match the commitment and energy demonstrated by our students and to engage in activities which can help promote the continuation of quality public higher education in Massachusetts. Such activities will vary from individual to individual, but might include devoting class sessions to lectures and activities connected with the strike and its concerns, participation in teaching and forums, holding classes at alternative sites, honoring picket lines, contacting alumni and parents, and joining students in lobbying legislators through phone banks, postcards, or personal visits to the State House. Let's support our students. Sincerely, John W. Cole, President. Yeah. I'd also like to say that at the executive board meeting this morning, we endorsed the GEO's demand that the administration recognize the GEO as a collective bargaining agent of the state. If anyone has any questions about the position of the MSP or to the degree that I can answer them about the position of the faculty, I'm happy to address them. Is that letter going to be sent to the faculty? That letter has been hand carried to the faculty last week by the undergraduates who are on strike. I think every faculty member has this. Yeah. Uh, how, how, is, how are the faculty responding to um, Duffy's letter today? How are the faculty responding to Duffy's letter today? The union didn't take a position on Duffy's letter or on the provost's letter. So um, I think the position on that is no position. Um, I think I can say um, my observation is, in general, there is, with regard to the undergraduate strike, um, as you probably know, the support is quite different throughout the campus. But I have been delighted and surprised at the enthusiasm that our members have shown and their recognition that, as one um, of our faculty representatives said yesterday, that the undergraduates are way out in front of us on this one, and uh, we need to get behind them and show unity with them.
I, I know of none and it would surprise me. You know that many faculty are making all sorts of alternative arrangements in order to, in order to honor the strike. Um, it, of course, if no one comes to their class, they can't teach. Many faculty, however, are honoring the strike by moving their class to alternative sites, making alternative arrangements. Um, that's, uh, we, we know of no faculty engaged in work stoppages which are illegal. I'd like to clarify here that the state, remember in 1979 how the state said that we're not really state employees but we're sort of half and half? Well that happens to be working in our favor right now because we can strike and it will not be, a, we can have a work stoppage and it will not be illegal in the United States. regarding the proposed work stoppage. <laughs> Hello out there. Uh, I really don't have a clear statement. I was kind of coerced into this by Cynthia Kaufman. She came up about 30 minutes ago and said, I need a speaker really quick. So I said, okay. So, um, so I just kind of ramble on maybe. Okay. Um, if we have this meeting next year, at this time, and the budget cuts go through, there are going to be 20% less of you out there attending this meeting. We're, you know, we as undergraduates are concerned about that. Um, a week ago, a week ago at this time, well, a week ago tonight, we were all sitting in the SGA office wondering whether or not the student government would endorse us. And they did by a vote of 66 to 11. And what that did is that said to mainstream students, this is going to work. You, your representatives are for this. We're going to strike. Last night, gra graduate GSS voted to strike. Now you have the chance to, to, to vote the strike and shut this university down. To, to, to tell Beacon Hill that we have had enough budget cuts. We want, we want our education. You want your education. You want your jobs. We have to tell Beacon Hill this. And I understand you're voting for two-day work stoppage. Two-day work stoppage. Okay. Um, the undergraduates were, um, were like not just picketing. We've got a lot of organization going on. We need your help. They're coordinating committee meetings every day at four o'clock. We encourage you to go give your ideas. We have um, voter registration going on right now. 1,700 people have registered to vote since it started. <laughs> what that tells me, Beacon Hill is these people care about their education. These 1,700 people are not gonna vote for people who voted for their budget cut. Um, we're doing community outreach. If you go out in Amherst Center, you see little strike posters up. I think it's on Route 91. You're coming in. It says UMass on strike. Um, we've been doing dorm education, which means I go, uh, students go door to door. We say, are you for the strike? And the majority of the people are for the strike, but they are waiting for you, too, to say, I'm gonna, they're worried about their classes. They're saying, you know, I'm, I'm on academic probation. I'm worried about failing my classes. What if my TA says, sorry, tough? That's why you have to endorse the strike, because if you endorse the strike, we shut this university down, like I said before. <laughs> this morning at 9 o'clock, I believe, a uh, lobbying trip went of 40 students to Beacon Hill to voice their concerns to key legislators on positions. And they wanted to see how they were going to vote on the Rosenberg Amendment, I believe. And they brought letters. And and we've been in Newman Center. I was there yesterday working it. There were 50 people there for eight phones. They were lined up. They were, we're getting the message across. We need, like I said, to just shut the place down. That's what we need you to strike for. Thank you.
Um, we're we're going to try to go, well, actually, tomorrow night, the undergraduates are having a meeting at 5 o'clock, and the general sentiment of the meeting is going to decide whether or not we continue the strike. But myself, personally, and a lot of people on the coordinating committee, we're going to strike until we have to. Now, we realize that you know, you're in a different bind than you, we are, but that's our position. We, know, we realize you're in a different bind. office. It has some interesting factual information that I think we need to share about what's going on in the administration's response to the budget cuts and how they plan to deal with the $6.4 million cut. I'm going to read those so to inform you all and then um, let Provost O'Brien answer questions as to the university administration's attitude towards this. The one comment I wanted to make to follow up on Dan's talk is that a lot of people are speaking of this as inappropriate political action, this strike. Well, I think that if you have 20,000 undergraduate students realizing the benefits that they get from quality education, and the fact that they have to fight for it in this state, and you educate them as to the political situation in this state, and you have them calling their representatives, and you have meetings like this, I think this is the most political, effective political action that we could possibly take on this campus, given our situation. <laughs> Well, to them I say, yeah, it's disruptive because you're disrupting us. We didn't want to strike. We don't want to be out of, out of classes this week. We didn't ask for this. They're disrupting this university through cutting our budget. Yeah. And it's been going on for way too long. Woo! So the fact that we want to politicize ourselves, organize ourselves, and work collectively, talk to each other, find out what the various bodies are doing, that is not ineffective political action. this mobilization next week. Geo is not talking about stopping this political activity after Friday, after if we vote for a work stoppage, after we go back to work next Monday. We'll continue the political activity, the lobbying and the phone calling and the mobilization. Now for the statement from the provost. The current frustrations among graduate assistants have naturally led to today's discussions about taking some form of work action. I am here today because I would like to add my voice to a discussion which I hope will be free, full, and open. Let me begin my comments by discussing the future. First, there are some facts which are important for you to take into account before your vote. And let me make clear that this has to do with the proposed fee hikes that Mark Cannon was referring to and how it is that those fee hikes are going to be used, where the funds are going. The prospects of cu prospect of cuts in either the number of graduate assistants or the level of their stipends was diminished earlier this week when the campus administration moved all graduate assistants off the state 03 budget. The threatened 10 percent, what has now been voted to a 20 percent cut in 03 spending by all state agencies cannot affect graduate assistants on this campus. Second, concerning the possible curriculum fee of $350, which the trustees voted last week, that fee will create a substantial pool for financial aid, and all graduate students will be eligible to apply for that aid. Those who receive the aid will be provided with a waiver they can submit with their bill next semester. Graduate students who are U.S. citizens should apply to the financial aid office promptly to ensure that their financial statements are accurate and up to date. Foreign graduate students should apply to the International Programs Office where their visa information and financial statements are currently available. So we are going to have a fee hike for graduate students, which we may or may not get reimbursed for, in order to pay our own salaries? Concerning the present and what you plan to do this week, first, I do not believe that boycotting classes is an effective political strategy for gaining support from the legislature. While it may make front page news for a few days, the interpretation readers make of that news is often unsympathetic. Nor do I believe that boycotting classes is necessary in order to perform well-focused, highly targeted political action. It is possible both to study and to lobby for one's political interests. 
Second, I would urge you all to vote against teach is teaching strike. It's not a strike, it's a work stoppage. I do want to make that clear. It's, it's something different from a labor strike. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll continue reading the statement straight. I would say to you what I wrote on Monday to all the faculty. Students may follow their conscience, but faculty are not free to abstain from their responsibilities. To boycott classes in which you are students leads only to your own loss, and you can determine whether that loss is worth, worth whatever political gain you think it earns. But to forego your teaching responsibilities leads to your students' loss, and I would question whether you have the right to inflict losses on your students for political reasons. I believe that teaching assistants on our campus have an obligation to instruct their classes as agreed when they sign their contracts for this semester. But these legal obligations concern me less today than the professional and moral obligations involved here. Um, Provost O'Brien, would you like to add to that or make, or make more comments? And, um, or if people have questions for the Provost, then please um, raise them. Let them have it. Mine? I'll repeat them from the mic just to make sure everybody can hear. Why do you think moving us out of the O3, why out of the solution? That's not even a band aid. Uh, Why does he think that moving us out of the O3 line item is a solution? It, um, it's not even a band-aid. Go to the mic. Go to the mic. Why don't you come? Would you like to come to the microphone? If people would like to address you here, that's fine. Thank you. I've been instructed not to make a speech, and I won't. But I do want to say we're on the same side in this thing. Our attacks are upon Boston, and those impossible cuts there, which are ruining your education and those of the, te and of the undergraduates. And the question is how we get our best objective. Now let me respond to that question. Uh, we did not uh, take the TA stipends off state in order to, uh, to get around that particular uh, cut that was threatened. We took it out because we were told last week we had to reduce our state budget by $6.4 million, and they asked, and where would you like to take the reduction? And so we were forced to take it in the only places that we were able to supplement it with fee money, and that was the, and those were the TA monies. The unexpected consequence is that, in fact, if the House does pursue this proposal to reduce the O3, by this, by, just by coincidence, it won't hurt us. In the long haul, however, obviously that's a very bad strategy. We would like in the years ahead to get back to a sensibly managed campus where the state provides the money it ought to do, and we can roll back those fees. At that point, people would go back on those three. But in the short run, it was not designed as a stratagem. It was just the only way we could handle uh, the rollback of the state budget. Back to the um, are the fees, are, are the fees that we're paying what source of what is the source of funds uh, for to pay student salaries now? It's not the old free account. Is, is it the fees? If it is the fees, isn't that the same thing as paying our salaries? <coughs> we pay increased fees so that we can maintain our salaries at, at, at the same level. It seems like we're in the way. The, the plain fact is you're mostly being paid from the fees of the undergraduates because those large those numbers are very large. You are indeed contributing to that by your own, by the, or will be, by that $350 fee, if that's sort of what goes through, which we hope it won't do. But, uh, but it's mostly undergraduate fees that are paying that. We're, right. we're being paid by the fees now. You're being paid right now in part, and next year, if all these things go through, almost totally by undergraduate curriculum fees, yes. Wow. That stinks, I know, I know. Uh, there's somebody Um, when you say that you're fed that this activity which has been going on this week is quite inappropriate, et cetera, it's wrong. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, I'm talking about the pro proposed TA strike, okay, not the you activities. Well, uh, well, uh, I mentioned Either way, either way, why is it? Well, this has been going on for almost two years now. This is the first time I've seen a high-level administrator address a mass meeting. And other campuses around the world and around the country, when he drops them up, they call everybody out and they deal with these issues publicly and with everybody. And this is the first time we begin to see you or W or anybody deal with a large mass of people. I think it's
take that as praise for coming here today or curses for not having come here the day before. As I see fit. This is the first time I think that uh, effective organization of graduate students has happened on this campus. Admittedly, never to such a large body because there's never met in one place such a large body of graduate students and I welcome you here and I think it's a sensible and intelligent thing to do. But I will remind you that in the spring, when there were meetings outside about the proposal to form a graduate student union, that Duffy and I both addressed that group and encouraged and said, go, go, it's the only way in this state you'll ever get any action. barriers to forming a graduate student union are not in any way those imposed by this administration. We believe that you would do better as an organized union to bargain with the state which simply doesn't recognize anybody except unionized people. So I, we support it, but there are legal barriers which have nothing to do with us which are standing in your way. Um, Mark, the gentleman in the back. Two questions. Um, one, two where we go? I beg your pardon. Two where we go? Using a uh, student fee money. Not in the line, correct. Okay. Second question I have is your support with the union drive is sounds unequivocal, but I just need it um, clear to me. Is this saying that when we reach majority, we have a vote on this campus, that you will recognize and bargain with us? I will, I will, if the law allows it, yes, Mark. I would encourage it. I think you should go ahead. The basic problem is, you know, that uh, the National Labor Relations Board has, uh, has ruled that, uh, that uh, TAs, for some absurd reason, aren't eligible. As soon as they turn that over, I'll be with you. How much of a cut in salary have the deans and the provosts on this yeah. campus taken so far? in salaries for any employees, including teaching assistants. It's our business to provide the ability to get you out to Boston and to talk to the people you've really got to persuade. Why won't I support it? Because our job as a university, and I believe you share that responsibility, is to teach any student who wants to come here to be taught. And my office has been inundated these last days by furious students and parents of students who say, my kid goes to class, the class isn't offered, I'm paying tuition here, what the hell is happening? And I've got to try and put on as good an education as those kids deserve. That's the reason why I wouldn't agree with you. Uh, educate your parents. This because we really do need to get to our agenda point. So could I get a more questions to the provost? Not statements or speeches, because we'll get those later on. Believe me, we'll have an opportunity to express ourselves. But more, more, okay? Um, also my teacher, Jane. Can you get this for my first? And uh, thanks for Duffy accepting the invitation to go to Delaware and when did we'd love to have a bomb boy on <laughs> No such offer has been made. Sorry, <laughs> James. I just wanted to ask at some point in this scene for um, a geo person to uh, give the other argument why the university can't recognize us as a bargaining agent. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that we're being removed from all three months. And that fees are going to pay for it. Wow. 
The exact amount is 6.4 million. It is the exact amount of the cup which the state has already imposed upon us and removed from our budget at this minute. $6.4 million worth. The question is, why are you only removing it for eight months? Why can't you let us have that 6.4 and add some to the appropriate oh. Frankly, it does make a whale of a lot of difference. One can move those subsidiaries around somewhat. It is a matter of convenience at this time that one can do it. It happens to pick up the advantage that if next week an O3 cut is imposed upon us, you won't suffer. So it's an advantage. But it's not a very big deal, I must tell you. If, if it was taken out of some other place, you just have to slide some on the other round out of other accounts. If the the situation at the moment is that the cut has not been formally imposed, okay? It's what the legislature is debating this moment, the House is debating. If the House will roll back that uh, $6.4 million cut, we will go straight back to where we were before, the fees will disappear, and you'll be back on 03, okay? Just one more question. I'm sorry, we really have to move on. We have to be out of here by five, and we've got to get organized, okay? Um, sit down in the country. Do you or do you not recognize that a fee increase for graduate students is logically equivalent to a pay cut? Logically equivalent to a pay cut, yes. Now, but let me... In those many cases in which TAs are supported solely and entirely by the kind of miserable stipends, which is all the state is allowing at this point, in those cases, there will I'm, be very substantial aid available. The people that would be hit worst would be those who uh, come from a household with a substantial housing income, household income and have other things which, as you know, tend to reduce financial aid. But the financial aid picture is an absolutely crucial piece, and I'm very concerned that the, the, the net result of the increase not be excessive in those people who are genuinely living on their stipends. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. I'm on your side. I want us to beat those so-and-sos in Boston. You're following your conscience, and I understand that. But I hope you realize that we've also got to worry about those undergraduates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas O'Brien. We're now going to move on to a discussion of the proposal from the Graduate Employee Organization Coordinating Committee. We're trying to, we're sort of debating what the best way to carry this off with such a large amount of people are. I know we all have a lot to say, however, we, I think what we need to do is get the arguments out there. If people want to speak in favor, good. If people want to speak against, we need to have the people speaking heard. Do you think that we should move the mic down and perhaps have people who want to speak line up on either side and take turns speaking? Would that be the most effective way? Yeah. Or come up on the stage. Why don't we just all line up, people who want to speak, to the motion line up on the sides of the stage. Okay, and come up and speak. Some people think that we should have one side for and one side speaking against. No, I, I think that's kind of, no, I don't think we need to do that. I think we just line them up. Time limit. Time limit. Time limit. Then we will place a time limit of <laughs> two, two minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. University. The facts are that in labor history, 
there was there were no labor commissions, there were no labor laws until late in the 1930s. And for a hundred years or more before that, labor people organized, negotiated contracts with their employers, and they were successful in it. There is no requirement under the sun that requires any group to have to use either the National Labor Relations Board or the State Labor Relations Commission in order to sit down with their employer and negotiate a contract. And what we're saying to the university is, we're here, we're clear on what we need, sit down and negotiate. Now, you are not considered, you would not really be covered under the National Labor Relations Board because you work for a state institution, so that was, I think, just a slip of the tongue. You're not covered under the State Labor Relations Board because the state ruled 10 years ago that you were sort of employees and sort of students, but that the laws that were out there didn't apply to you. So you're in this never-never land of not being covered by the law. Now that does not mean it's illegal to organize. It simply means that if we want to have an election or a card count or just say to the university, here we are, let's negotiate a contract, then we don't go through any of the labor commission rules. We have to get the university to voluntarily just agree to sit down. Now we've seen universities across the country do that, most recently at the University of California. 5,000 teaching assistants and research assistants joined with District 65 and got the university to sit down and bargain with them. That happened this fall. Now how did they do it? They had a two-day walkout in the spring and the university was sure they were going to walk out again at the beginning of the, this past semester and said, let's sit down and write up an agreement. And the chancellor himself of the UC Berkeley campus negotiated that agreement to sit down and do a whole contract. So it's absolutely possible. I don't think that there's any barrier at all to it except actually reaching out and saying to the administration at this point, here we are, we're ready to go, the needs are very, very compelling because it's our jobs on the line right now. So those are the facts and I hope that we can work with the university to get you under contract very quickly. this color ballot for the balloting process. Please leave your vote and your ballot as you go, but please don't leave. The discussion is terribly important and we'd like to continue the meeting. except your own constitution as GL, in which it's clear that you set up a structure where you have membership, and if a majority of you as members want to take an action, you're absolutely free to do that. Um, since you're not governed by any larger body of laws, you really are in a position where you can decide how you want to do things. At this moment, we don't have a majority. I'm very hopeful that by the end of the day, Friday, we will. The cards are coming in at a phenomenal rate based on this whole action that's taking place. And that's really the movement that we're about. All right, I'd like to open the floor for debate on the proposal. I'd like to limit the um, speakers to one minute and we will try to keep this part before the official voting to 20 minutes. So if you'd like to speak, please come to the stage in favor of this. We're debating the proposal for the work stoppage and the package of demands about the restoring the $25 million cut to the, from the university, maintaining pay, maintain paying fringe benefits for trust fund employees, don't increase out-of-state tuition, don't cut the 03 line item, which, as you, I think you understand from the debate, that is still a relevant issue. We still need to talk to the legislators about how they're going to fund a public institution's graduate programs. And don't rescind the tuition waivers the faculty and staff receive. And finally, that the university agree to a card count or an independent election for the GO to prove majority status and to bargain with us over working conditions and wages. Yeah. And 
and we'd like to make clear that the second part of the proposal in terms of the job action we are proposing is not simply that we're canceling or postponing our classes, but that we're taking and getting involved in steps one through four, which is why it is absolutely crucial that people stay here and organize with us so that depending on the vote for the stoppage, we can get out there and be visible and be a force and lobby and take all the political flex politically effective action. The other very important announcement I'd like to make is that at 12 o'clock tomorrow, there's going to be an all-union solidarity rally at 12 o'clock on the student union steps, which I encourage all GO members and all graduate students to attend. This is an incredible show of solidarity from every person who works on this campus and every union representing it. appreciate their support for the um, actions that we're taking. So I'd like to open the floor to debate and amendments to this proposal. <coughs> Could people line up if you want to say something so we can get this process moving? Hello. Yes, my name is Carlos Pabon. I'm a TA in the history department. I'd like to argue in favor of the work stoppage for Thursday and Friday, but I am concerned first about the wording of this motion, if we can call it a motion, because I don't see any clear relationship between the demands we are making and the action we are taking. I am not sure, I am not sure when it says that the specific demands of this action, which, which refer to a two-day work stoppage, and we list very heavy demands that definitely are not going to take place over the weekend and that imply struggle over this semester and probably next semester, does that mean that after the work stoppage we do not accomplish these demands, we have failed, A? Does that mean that we then decide to go into a more definite strike, B? Does that mean that we have to define other means of struggles? That is not clear. And I think thus that what worries me most about this proposal is that I don't see any long-term strategic discussion going on. I doubt very much that there's going to be a significant amount of people here against a two-day work stoppage. I am not sure if people are inclined to do this because there is an undergraduate strike going on. If that is our first reason to do a work stoppage, we must stop and consider that already different sectors of the undergraduate people on strike, faculty members, are considering the idea that it best be called a victory, that strike, and we get on with other means of struggle. So then, if we are, if we are stopping because we have specific demands that we are making, I think we should rephrase this motion and that this work stoppage be part of an ongoing process of struggle and one means among others. So come Monday, we are not left in the air as to where we stand after 48 hours of work stoppage. And I hope, I hope that that work stoppage would get us these demands. I seriously doubt that after a two work, work day work stoppage, even if every TA in this university stopped, even if every faculty member stopped, we will get these demands. So I think we have to readdress the wording. So as, I'm sorry? I wouldn't know this, the exact wording. I would be something like, and I'll tell um, a, rough, a rough estimate that Thursday and Friday be two days of action uh, uh, as, one as one means, help me here, <laughs> as one means to achieve these, these broad goals of stopping the budget cuts, blah, 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 whatever. I think it's not rhetoric, I think it's an important point to make for ourselves so we know where we stand because I want to stress. importance of not getting lost in the immediacy of Thursday and Friday and getting all wind up about going on a work stoppage and forgetting about the broad strategic issues. We have to line out a strategy, a strategy of long struggle because this thing we're not going to beat these guys with just a two-day work stoppage. So we have to think other means of struggle and get on with it. Thank you very much. has been stressing
asserting that this two-day action is a means of politicizing the community, is a means of getting to our majority, and that on December 5th, for example, we are organizing a speak-out on campus to which we're going to invite legislators, members of the House Ways and Means Committee, etc. So I think that that is a very friendly amendment and that we can rephrase it as a two days of job action as part of our ongoing struggle as members of this community to re reach these goals. Please keep your comments for one minute. My name is Bruce LeBain, I'm in the Computer Science Department. And uh, first off, I want to say that I asked my students today, I went to class today, of course, I'm not stopping work until we vote to do so. And I asked my students what they thought. And they thought that we should vote for a strike, or work stoppage. This isn't necessarily a scientific sample here. But the point is that what if we decide that we're going to stop work on Thursday and Friday, or some other day, some other time, we can do it for personal reasons, or we can do it for the more important reason that the legislature is in the process of dismantling the university. We don't want them to do that. Well, we can show them what it would be like to not have a university on Thursday and Friday. And when all of those parents, when all of those parents call the provost and say, why isn't my child getting an education? The provost can, shouldn't say, well, it's all the TA's fault because blah, blah, blah. He should say, call your legislator. of our students to have their parents call their legislators. And if we do go on a work stoppage, I think we should shut the university down. Yeah. I think... I think we should put pickets at all the entrances to the university. Yeah. At all the entrances to the campus center, yeah. to the dorms. Well, maybe not the dorms. <laughs> we'll let them sleep. So, okay. so, other unions will honor those picket lines, and the university will not be able to stay in business. For those two days. Okay. Everybody, please be aware of this purple sheet. I think um, we can sort of read a sentiment here in terms of how this vote's going to go, and we really do need to organize to make sure that we're on the picket lines, and GEO is um, made suggestions in coalition with the GSS as to how we're going to do this tomorrow and Friday. But in the meantime, just be aware of this sheet and um, don't leave, please, without signing up to do something if you have to leave. My name is Todd Little from the History Department. Um, I'd like to offer a friendly amendment that we urge the undergraduate union to call off the student strike at the end of Friday and move on to make concrete proposals for changes in strategy for the long term. That a week of stopping classes is plenty. And that after that we begin to need to talk, I mean, I think all of us have heard all of the different arguments, but we begin to need to say, what is our long term strategy? So great, we stop until Thanksgiving. We are no, in some ways we've organized, we've done something really amazing now, and I think we really need to move on and, and make that the focus of our attention. So if that's accepted. Um, if people think that we should add this to our proposal as encouraging we debate no. 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 all right no. Colin to assess the strike and to make their decision on Thursday night, so it's a little difficult for us here to sort of go one way or the other anyway. Let them make their own decision.
our political power in terms of being able to vote is not very great because most of us are either in Amherst or out of state at this point are registered. Some of us are registered at home, but we have very few votes to make any difference in any legislative race. The other thing that legislators understand is money. And obviously the salaries that we're on, we don't have any money to donate to campaigns. That's the basis of, of political power and influencing the legislature. Our parents aren't really that relevant at this point in terms of affecting the legislature. We're not enough people who live around Massachusetts. Our only political power is in our work on this campus. And it's only by exercising that political power, just as a two-day demonstration of what that power is about, is the only way we can express collective action at this point. So I would urge us to vote in favor of the proposal. The other thing, real quick, real briefly, I want to send this message to the undergraduates who are here. I know there are a lot of them here. In fact, how many of you undergraduates part of the union are here? Okay, there are a lot of you here. I've been working with the union of undergraduates since its inception a couple of weeks ago, and I've been working with the people who organize it for a long, long time. I've been trying to make this message clear to them, and they haven't really received it real well. So it, obviously it's coming out today in this meeting, and I want to put it on record for people, for me, is that there are a lot of graduate students who are very upset that we were not consulted and not put into the process on the side of the strike. It doesn't mean that you need our approval to do it, by no means. But there was not, we've been working together, undergraduates, graduates, and unions on this campus through the Leadership Coalition for months now. And this strike affects us, because when you set up a picket line, we have got to make a choice about crossing or not. And that affects us. And next, we hope that if we go on strike, for when we have a job action for two days, it's the beginning of ability to work together. Not inviting one graduate student to sit on your steering committee, but to have a joint committee of graduates and undergraduates and union people on this campus so we can fight this together. Thank you. I would urge anyone that is opposed specifically to get up and speak because we need to hear both sides of this. If there are people opposed to the work stoppage, please. Hi, my name is Sherry Vandenacker. I'm a TA in the writing program and I'm a grad student in the English department. And I'm really excited by everything I'm seeing here today and very little has been said that I disagree with but I do disagree with the work stoppage, and I have three reasons for that, and I'd like to have your patience. First, I uh, don't mean to be a parrot of Provost O'Brien <laughs> by any means, but I do believe we do have a moral obligation to teach classes to people who have paid for classes and who have made a lot of sacrifices to pay those bills and sit in our classrooms every day. Students are still coming to classes, that to me says they want to be there, they want to learn, they want to get an education. My contract says I'm going to do my best to give that to them and I intend to do that. <laughs> oh well, hey, can't be friends with everybody. Okay, secondly, the cuts, <laughs> the cuts that are being proposed and the fee increases are horrifying. They're for next semester and I really urge this group to think about taking these actions next semester. When our friends, hey, we have given a contract this semester. That contract's not being broken now. We will unilaterally break our contract by going on strike this semester. Next semester, we'll have specific things to protest. This semester, we're protesting proposed cuts, proposed fees that aren't even definitely in place yet. And third, I do believe that the strike is losing momentum. I asked my students, to, four students only had written postcards, three only were registered to vote, and three only had done strike-related activities when they didn't come to class on Monday out of 19. I'm hearing from my family and friends in Boston, the press on this doesn't seem negative, but people's opinions of it are, and I feel like we're really hurting our cause. And I don't want to do that because we're facing enough shit right now. Thank you. All right, next, I'd really like to encourage people to keep their comments for one minute. Yeah. Hi, my name is Jayant Iranki. I'm a graduate student in manufacturing engineering. I was going to respond to my colleague who spoke previously and also in part to Richard O'Brien's uh, comments. 
the whole attitude seems to be that this is only a minor storm. Just stick your head in the sand and it will go away. Don't worry about it. Sort of attitude, which is nonsense. If we start dithering right now as to what action we are going to take, next semester you may not be around to protest this. Yeah. Secondly, another very good reason is that we as graduate students, they have to show that we, they can't keep pushing us. Up, we are up against the wall, we have our backs to the wall, and we aren't willing to be pushed anymore. This is it. Yes, and two days. We are stopping work for two days, which means for most TAs, one class missed, or one, one discussion section missed, or whatever. And that's not such a big deal when you're talking about the future of the university as a viable entity. You know, we, this is, we have to, we have, what we need is, what we're lacking is a sense of perspective now. We are too immediate in our concerns. O O'Brien said, Provost O'Brien said that they're going to cut this 350, this 350, uh, dollar fee raise is some sort of a temporary measure and once those benevolent, benevolent gods out there give us back our money, we can, you know, we roll those fees back. What do you mean roll those fees back? It's, we are not naive to believe that they're going to ever de decrease those fees. We, we are Yeah, and uh, okay, I have also an amendment to propose. Uh, out here on the thing it says to accomplish these goals we propose the TS cancel or postpone the classes okay we can add an amendment if you're really concerned that the students are going to lose their uh, classes or whatever we can add an amendment saying that we suggest that uh, people um, you know hold these classes in alternative locations but you know actually cancel or postpone their actual class <laughs> We are encouraging people to remain accessible to undergraduate students. We don't want to hurt the undergraduates. What we're asking is that you stop your work, cancel or postpone your classes. That doesn't mean you can't, you know, have another meet with your undergraduates in your office or do something else as you see fit to keep up with your schedule as a TA. All right? Is that clear in terms of the proposal? Because I don't know if we should... I have one final point to make also. Uh, all these things here, the action here seems to suggest that this is all very only oriented towards just these two days. I'd suggest that we use these two days to uh, organize for future action, what, as people said, for things beyond Monday. And we should also involve the undergraduates in these. You know, people in your classes, take your class out, stand under a tree and talk to them about, make them sign postcards and all that sort of stuff. Thank you. very concise. If you are going to repeat or just simply speak again in favor of something, please pass to someone else. Um, I do want to remind you that this proposal includes all four of these things. We're not just stopping work for two days. We're organizing and we're becoming a body to continue for the future. Hi, my name is Jim. I'm from the Mechanical Engineering uh, Department and I'm a grad student here. And one of the things that's upset me about what's going on is, is Boston going to listen to us? Are, is two days work stoppage going to be effective of us to have them get out of their holes there and look here and see what we're doing and notice that there is a problem? This, the future of the state belongs to us. We are the future. We are the ones that are going to make it because we're the ones that are teaching the classes. So, I'm also very nervous being up here too. <laughs> um, and to bring this really, really short, I don't know if two, just two days of work stoppage is going to be enough. Are we going to have to do this again next semester? Are we going to have to do it again? Are we going to have to do what they did in California in order to get the union recognized? I see that as the beginning, and I see that over the next two days, we should use that time to organize ourselves to a point that we are effective.
encourage you, if you're just speaking in favor, um, please think about your comments and pass if you don't have anything really substantial to say. I think there's a sentiment for the vote. All right, we have to call to close debate then if people are calling for the vote. All right, we're going to close the vote now on whether to close the debate on this issue, on this statement and on this job action. All those in favor of closing the debate now, please raise your card. All right, the debate is now closed. We're going to call it to a vote. We ask you to fill out your ballot. The pink Combo photojournalist reporter. Heberly. Heberly. Uh, hello, we're here with Union Video Center, here with Renee Heberly. And Renee, first of all, could you tell us what the outcome of the, of the vote was today? Yeah, the outcome was 80% of those who voted voted in favor of the work stoppage. All right, so this will mean uh, Thursday and Friday there will be no discussion sections with TAs, no classes taught by TAs. That's what GEO has voted on today, that's right. Work stoppage on the part of TAs and organizing efforts on the part of all TAs and RAs and pickets. All right. Are any of the demands in your strike, uh, do they differ from the demands of the undergraduate, uh, the union of undergraduates? Basically, our demands are the same. The only one that we have added is that the university negotiate with us when we reach a majority. Um, but restore the $25 million cut dollar cut, maintain paying fringe benefits for the trust funds, don't increase state tuition, do not cut the 03 line item for TAs, and do not rescind the tuition waivers that faculty and staff currently receive, as well as this final one that the MSP Executive Board Committee endorsed this morning, and that is agree to a card count or an independent election for GEO to pr prove majority status and to bargain with us over working conditions and wages once we reach majority. And those are the demands we're putting out there. And once this work stoppage is done, successful, we send our message, we will continue to lobby and continue to send the message and continue to organize to fight for quality education. Um, All right, I guess the big question on everyone's mind is do you think this will be successful? Will it make a difference? I think it will make a difference. I think that the undergraduates have been looking for the graduate students to make a statement and favor the strike. A lot of the undergraduates are a little bit uneasy about supporting the strike or boycotting classes given that their graduate TAs might not be. I think this will send a message to the entire campus that everyone needs to join in solidarity to make this a very successful week-long strike um, on the part of the university. All right. Thank you and uh, welcome aboard.